Hi, I'm Mike, and today on the project list, calving has started on the ranch. And we need to make sure that the cows can get to the barn when they need help. Also, we'll be building a brand new tool for Erin that she'll be using in the garden, and we'll check on our brand new baby calf. It's all coming up on the project list on our Wyoming Life. <laughs> This week, we started calving around here, and as all big projects start, with one little step. We now have one very cute little calf out there with the heifers. We've been keeping a close eye on her, as well as the other cows that are getting close, and we're gonna be out to check on them in just a little bit. If this is your first time here, thanks for joining us as we explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary. Every Tuesday, we get a chance to tackle this list behind me. We call it the project list, and on it are all the big things and the little things that need done around here. Weather is a factor on how and what we do, and we are looking at a little bit of a warming trend coming up. Temps up into the 50s for the next 10 days or so, and that means a bunch of snow is gonna melt, and hopefully some ice as well, and give us a chance to really get into the list over the next couple weeks. As the weather picks up, so does Erin's eagerness to get into the gardens and get going on her next winter planting project. In the basement of our house are hundreds of plants that are all ready to get into the ground and do their thing. Before we can get them there though, we need to do some work in the high tunnel, which Erin will probably be getting into this week. One project she's gonna need to do is turning over the soil. Now, she doesn't wanna till it up quite yet, but what she does want to do is loosen the soil to facilitate the new planting. We've got a bit of a surprise for her here today. It's a new Haas wheel hoe. She's never used one before, but I have caught her drooling over them in the catalog and online. So we got one to give to her, and hopefully it makes her life a little bit easier when it comes to hoeing and getting rid of those pesky weeds. This hoe is manufactured by Haas Tools. It'll run you about 180 bucks. But if you've ever had to hoe almost a quarter of an acre by hand, you know that a standard hoe will wear you out pretty quick. And hopefully having the wheel on here will make it a lot easier for her. The reviews for it are very good as well. And as we get to taken out of the box, it looks pretty simple to assemble. Included with our kit are three attachments for the tool a plow attachment for making hills and raised beds, three cultivator teeth for tilling up the ground, and an oscillating hoe for weeding. Today, we're gonna to put on the oscillating hoe for a start, although I'm sure that Aaron will want to try out all of the attachments eventually. The instructions that come with this thing are amazing. It really impresses me when companies take the time to make good instructions with pictures as well as instructions on how to use the thing after you've got it built. After gathering our tools we're going to need, it's just a matter of attaching the wheel with a single bolt and a nylon nut, putting on the oscillating hoe and attaching that. Quick side note, I like how the attachments have the nuts on the top side. It'll make it a lot easier to switch them out when we have to. Then it's just a matter of attaching the handles and the cross support bar. Once it's off the table, you can see how it works. By pushing it through the soil, the blade of the stirrup will slice through the top inch or so of the soil, cutting the roots and pulling the plants out of the ground. As with most things around here, you can't get away without making a quick modification of some sort. And I can't say that I'm a huge fan of how the hoe doesn't stay up on its own. But I think by adding a kickstand of sorts, we can keep the handles out of the dirt and keep Erin from having to bend over every time she has to pick this thing up. After a quick measurement, we can cut a piece of wood to fit and see how it would work. Then a couple of quick holes with the drill, a quarter inch bolt, two washers, and a nut. We now have a kickstand and Erin has a wheel hoe. Our next project for the day involves the cows, specifically the heifers in the corrals. Now they've begun calving, and soon we'll have quite a few calves out there with them. Heifers are first time moms, and they're notorious for needing help in the calving process. In order to help them, sometimes we have to be able to take them into the barn. 
And right now, that task would be a little difficult. Thanks to a 60 mile an hour wind, along with some thawing and freezing, the path we would take the heifers into the barn on is blocked by a four foot snow drift, which we need to get rid of. For this job, we're gonna use our skid steer, a Bobcat S630. We've had it for a number of years, and it's pretty handy for moving snow, cleaning corrals and other jobs that require a smaller tractor to get into tight spaces. Right now, it has the forks on it, but a one trick pony is no good and only fun for a little while. Luckily, we have a number of attachments we can use on the Bobcat, and today we're gonna drop off the forks and hook up the bucket to move this snow. After opening some gates and letting ourselves into the alley system of the corrals, we can start shoveling it out. These are pretty tight quarters, even for this machine. And one wrong move and we could go right through these fences, snapping them like toothpicks. Underneath all this snow is a thick layer of ice, which makes things rather interesting as the tires really don't have much to grip onto. Sliding into a fence is a real possibility. So what we're gonna do is work up the middle of the alley, moving snow up and out of the way until we can take the corner into the corrals. Once we finally get there, we can clean out a bunch more snow, leaving the ice which is now underneath the warm sun where hopefully it'll melt over the next couple of days. It's not pretty, but it's a lot better than what it was. And soon we have a direct path from the corrals, down and around, and through the alley, straight into the barn, where we're ready to assist any cow with any problem they may have. Getting a job like this it done and out of the way now will make life so much easier in the future. When we get more snow, it won't be building on top of the old stuff. And when it comes to getting a cow in labor into the barn, minutes can make the difference between life and death for that little calf, whose only goal is to be born healthy and happy. Speaking of, let's go take a look at our newest little girl. She was born Sunday morning and so far seems to be enjoying life, aside from the fact that she doesn't have anybody to play with yet. Soon enough though, she will. But for now, she gets to hang out with the heifers in the heifer corral. Her mom loves keeping an eye on everything we do with her calf. Heifers tend to either be intensely protective of their calves or extremely lackadaisical. She's somewhere in between, always watching, but not sure what that thing that came out of her really is. Grace has already named her Cookie Milk. And if you follow us on Facebook, you've already had a chance to meet her within hours of her birth. Soon, she was christened with ear tag number one, making her the first calf of 2018. Now, the real fun starts around here. About 160 some odd calves left to show their faces. And that'll keep us really busy over the next few months. But it doesn't stop all the other stuff that needs done. And now is when our juggling skills really come into play, managing the ranch, family, and everyday life all at the same time. Oh yeah, and cut out a bunch of sleep. Because starting now, we get to check, and we don't only get to check cows, I guess, in the morning and last thing at night, but soon, and especially if the weather gets bad, which it probably will again, we will be checking at night about uh, every four hours or so heading out and making sure that each and every cow is okay checking the calves that are already on the ground and the moms that have yet to have theirs it's an exciting time around here but also one of the most stressful times and every year is different Thanks for giving me a hand today. Erin's gonna be back in the garden this week as uh, she's get, gonna start uh, prepping the high tunnel. And hopefully she can show us how her new surprise tool works for her. 
That's all gonna be coming up on Thursday for you. Find us on Facebook because that is probably gonna be the best place to follow along with calving this season. And you can keep up day to day. We're of course gonna keep on putting out our three videos per week on Tuesday, I had to think about that, Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. Until I see you again, have a great week, and thanks for joining us in our Wyoming life.